What's going on, Tamers? It's me, a uh, guy stuck in new release waiting room. Like, like most folks on, on the Ian side, you're doing the same thing. BT8 is coming out very soon here over in Japan, and I need to get through a lot of decks that I haven't highlighted yet before the meta shifts. So what I want to do is, first I want to, this week, just shoot through as many uh, deck profiles as I possibly can for BT7 before we get access to the new cards coming out soon. And uh, to start that off, I'm going to be doing a profile on a deck that was really popular in BT6, and continues to be really strong in BT7 because I got a couple more tools to help it adapt to the new BT7 meta. So that being said, let's take a look at Jessmon Red in BT7, a deck profile. Okay, so let's take a look at the deck down here on the deck cam. And uh, to start things off, I'm going to take a look at the level 3s and work my way up. So this deck actually has changed its splits quite a bit since, the, since BT7 came out. So... There's not as many level 3s as most decks aren't running many of them either. But it is running 3 copies of the BT6 Searcher Huckmon. This guy's good because he lets you look at the top 5. And then grab 2 cards that have either Sistermon, Jessmon, or Huckmon out of their name. Next up I've got 4 copies of the new Huckmon from BT7. Which on attack for inheritance allows you to look at the top 5 cards of your deck. And then grab a Sistermon out of there and then put it into your hand. Rest go to the bottom of the deck in any order. Moving right along to some of the level 4s, I've got 4 copies of BT6 Huckmon, who allows you to destroy a level 5,000 or lower if you have a Sister Mon on the board. So the next level 4, this card can vary depending on how you feel about the deck. I'm a guy who values low cost cards and getting to my Jessmon. So rather than putting in cards that give me additional effects, I'm going to opt for really low cost Digivolves in cards like Dark Tyrannomon here, which you see 4 copies of. Again, this guy is only here. He's a vanilla, but he's a really low-cost level 4 Digivolve at 1. Moving on to the level 5s, I've got the 4 copies of Saber Huckmon, allowing you to become active if you have a Sistermon on the board once you attack for Inheritance. And then on Digivolve, he allows you to play Sistermon for no cost from your hand. Following the trend of the low-cost vanillas in the deck just to get to my Jessmon, I run 4 copies of Lava Garidamon just because it's a 2-cost level 5. Much like the Dark Tyrannomon, it doesn't do much else except let me get to my Jessmon a little bit faster. In a meta where speed really is key trying to keep up with hybrids, I think this might be the better build. But some folks do opt to go with you know, the level 5s and level 4s that grant you security attack plus 1. A guy like me though, I'm just trying to get there, you know. And then the star of the deck, Jessmon himself. Four copies, of course, you gotta have this guy. He's what you're trying to build toward. So you can get a bunch of Sistermon effects off, pump him up, he gets piercing, he become active again, he can control level 5,000 on the swing from Inheritance. This guy's so good. Probably one of the strongest boss monsters in the game as of now. And for times where you just need a little, one more swing to get through, Omega Mon here is the, the answer. Giving you Blitz on Digivolve, allowing you to swing one more time before your turn's over. And then he's just really sticky, right? If your opponent is running a lot of removal, this guy wants you to Digivolve your Jessmon into, this, into him. Allows you to stick around for a little bit longer and forces your opponent to spend a lot of memory to get rid of him. And so that's it for most of the lines of the deck. The next set of cards we're going to talk about are actually the Sistermon. And this is where I think the deck really got a buff from BT6. So let's take a look at it. Right off the cuff, I got four copies of Sistermon Blanc. This card is a blocker. It also draws more cards, allows you to cycle through the deck. So, so good. Like before in BT6, I also run a couple copies of Sister Mon Noir. Some folks run this at 3, some folks run it at 2. It really is your preference. A guy like me, I do like to run it at 3. I always want to make sure that I have a Sister Mon in my hand whenever I can swing with my Jessmon. Or I have a Saber Huck Mon on the board. So I just want to make sure that I can always get the maximum effects off of these cards. And plus 2,000 to all of your Huck Mon or your Royal Knights type Digimon is pretty nice. Where the deck I think got the biggest buff is in... Sister Mon Blanc Awakened. Um, this card is incredible. If you play this card and you can put a Sister Mon Blanc from your trash or your hand up under her in, in its source, you can recover one. So once you get at least one Sister Mon Blanc and one of these uh, Awakened Sister Mon Blancs onto the board, you can start to recover over and over and over again. And uh, it's pretty good. Then on Delete, she allows you to pull back a Huckmon Sister Mon Blanc. Not the Awakened version, but uh, just regular System on Blanc or uh, Jessmon and put it back into your hand. So she allows you to cycle cards from the trash back to your hand in case you run out of fuel. And then she also helps you recover your security over and over to keep you healthy during the game and survive against those really fast hybrids. 
Moving right along. I've got for the tamers three copies of the Taikamiya tamer. I just like having three memory minimum and at the same time being granted plus one security attack if I have a, a stack. Basically, if I have a Jessmon, is pretty nice. All right, so taking a look at some of the options, I run, uh, I think this is where my list differs from a lot of folks, but again, I think the options should be there to support you in the playstyle that you like. And so this is kind of how I run my splits. But anyway, let's take a look here. First up, I've got two copies of uh, Judgment of the Blade. Yeah, I think that's what it's called in English, which allows your Jessmon or Huckmon to, s or Royal Knights Digimon, basically, uh, to swing into an active Digimon. And then on security, it allows you to play System on from your trash, which is really good considering System on Blanc Awakened is uh, is in that card pool. Next up, I don't run a lot of level threes in this deck, and if you've seen my video regarding how to build decks, I believe that if you run less level threes, you need to run a lot more searchers or ways to search or, or draw through the deck. So the way that I do that is by adding in two copies of Red Memory Boost, which allow me to look at the top four cards of my deck and then grab a red Digimon out of those. And then with the delay ability on a later turn, I can spend it and gain two memory back. And then finally, with the meta so wild and crazy as it is right now, you need to be prepared for everything. And I think that all good decks need to have some form of removal. So I have two forms of removal. The first is actually going to be two copies of Atomic Blaster, which allow you to destroy a number of Digimon whose total DP equals 8,000. So just being able to clear small boards like Rookie Rush or just one big level five is pretty useful. And then sometimes things get out of hand, things get out of control. Your Jessmon can't get over a Digimon for whatever reason. And uh, that's why you need two copies of Guy Force to just spirit bomb a Digimon if you need to. And so yeah, that's pretty much the deck. I don't think I need to harp on it too much just because I think it was pretty popular in BT6. A lot of folks will kind of understand and recognize a lot of these cards that I talked about. So there's no use in going over all of them again. Again, the System on Blanc Awaken really is a game changer for this deck. It makes it so much stronger being able to survive until you can get to your Jessmon in a really fast-paced meta with all the hybrids. I know a lot, a lot of folks are probably asking, well, why don't you run uh, a delicate plan to stop you know, security control? I don't know. I feel like in decks where you would have to run a single copy of a card to account for an entire matchup, the chance of you having the card during the matchup is pretty low if it's just one copy, so I just don't even run it. I hope to just build my Jessmon, and then once I build my first Jessmon on the board, I start to build the second one in security. So if he gets taken out, then I have a way to replace him immediately the next turn. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions about the deck or any of the lines. If you have any questions about the system on Blanc Awakened, maybe why I don't run the system on Noir Awakened. Uh, yeah, and I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.